One of the most technical skills for a business analyst is learning how to use structured query language, abbreviated as SQL and usually pronounced SQL. When browsing business analysis job listings, it's one of the few technical skills listed for the role. One question that gets asked often is, do you need to have it? So in this video, I'm going to quickly describe what it is and if it's actually really that important. To understand the value of SQL, you first need to understand how database tables work in a complex organization with lots of data. So let's take a basic, basic example. Let's say you are a company and you sell things. You might have a database with the following tables, products, customers, and orders. Please note that this won't be a full on relational database and SQL syntax tutorial. And therefore I'll cover the basics, but not the full theory for that. You should take a full training course. Let's start with the customer table. You might have a customer ID, first name, last name, email address, phone number, and a physical address. Simple. Next, a product table. A product table might have the product ID, product name, product type, price, product size. Every row in a table has to have a unique identifier. In these first tables, it is customer ID and product ID. This is so you can always find the exact thing you're looking for. This is important from a data perspective, but, and also from a practical perspective, for example, if two customers have the same name. Now, when a customer buys a product, you have this thing called an order. An order is a transaction. So this table will have the transaction details, a transaction ID, a transaction date, the total cost, and a customer ID. This is our first table relationship. We have a table called order and one of the fields ties this order to a customer. A customer can have or exist on multiple orders, but an order cannot have more than one customer. This relationship is called one to many. We aren't done yet though. Every order will also have products because products can be on multiple orders and orders can have multiple products. Here we have a many to many relationship, which for the sake of this video, you just need to understand isn't allowed between two tables. So an intermediate table is created to house the relationship in real life. This table would likely be called something like order lines and it exists to join these two tables. The columns would be something like line ID, line number, product ID, order number. That's really it where line ID is a unique identifier and product ID connects it to a product from the product table and order ID connects it to the order table with the transaction details. So now we have a database from which our business is run. However, now you have a database of four related, but individual tables. If you had access to the tables, but didn't understand SQL, the best you could do is extract the data from each table independently. In other words, four disjointed Excel files, um, but that information won't be super valuable in driving business decisions. For example, if I wanted to know the customers who spent more than hundred dollars, I would need data from both the customer and the order tables combined. Another example might be if I wanted to know which customers bought a certain product or which states spent the most money or buy certain products. SQL is a language to essentially build a sentence that allows you to extract data exactly how you want it. It allows you to combine and filter the data from the tables in exactly the way you need it. So if I wanted to extract the data that shows me the customers who spent more than hundred dollars on orders and the states they are from the query might look something like this. This statement basically reads retrieve a set of data that includes a customer's first name, last name, state, order date, and order total from the customer table combined with the order table where the order total is more than hundred dollars. Creating that statement. If you understand the tables would take you seconds. You could even join all four tables to see which states order the most of a particular product. This would take some serious time or Excel wizardry to get to if you didn't know SQL. All that being said, the one thing to keep in mind is that people have understood for a long time that SQL and understanding how to make complex joints can be hard to accomplish, especially if you work for a large organization where there are th hundreds of thousands of tables to connect and analyze and the query statements can literally be pages long. Tools like Tableau or business objects allow you to simply say, I want customer name, state, order number and product ID, and it does all the querying behind the scenes. As a business analyst, if you have access to such a tool and the organization's data is connected to it, then you don't have to know SQL to do this kind of analysis. Understanding the table structure and how they relate will allow you to create better reports and analysis in these tools, but it won't be as mandatory. Long story short, you can be a solid business analyst and analyze data without SQL if your company has invested in the tools to make it unnecessary. However, having that knowledge can be a huge advantage for you if those tools aren't available. And if they aren't available, you might be the business analyst getting paid to implement those data tools. 
I hope that was helpful. If it was, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any additional questions regarding this or any business analysis question, let me know in the comments and I'll answer you there or create a whole new video just like this one. So subscribe to see your questions get answered. And thanks for watching.